Good morning and happy Monday. It's a cold one here in southeastern Massachusetts. It's uh, the end of March, but we always get like these uh, surprise snowstorms around this time. We had a uh, blizzard, I forgot what year it was, but it was April 1st. So um, it's not snowing here. We have a uh, few of the cities and towns around us that have gotten some snow and just seem to be in the pocket that's avoiding it. Oh well. Anyways, that's not what I want to talk about. I'm not the weather forecast or the meteorologist here. Uh, what I wanted to talk about was my wonderful mindfulness retreat this weekend, this past weekend, that I experienced. And um, not to, you know, um, sell or, uh, you know, be a evangelist on mindfulness, but just kind of like what I took away from it and, um, you know, it, it, some things that kind of connected and clicked and came together for me, um, it was fabulous. It was fabulous. It was a lot of, I had a lot of anxiety around it originally, um, you know, spending the whole day meditating. Um, we also practiced noble silence, so, you know, there was no um, talking on our part, our instructor, of course. Um, was speaking to us throughout the, you know, meditations, the guidance, and there was, you know, some silences between and whatnot, but um, we, all, we all had a, like a lower gaze, so not only were we not speaking to each other, but we weren't like looking at each other, right? We we're giving each other privacy and not also engaging in any kind of, um, you know, sometimes it's automatic for us if we look and we smile at someone, you know, it, it's, it was trying to reduce that and, and whatnot. Anyway, so what I got from it, um, several things. What I got from it was, first of all, it was en enjoyable in the way that it was doable. It wasn't what I imagined it would be. And um, there was a lot of things that happened that I didn't anticipate that kind of like connected the dots for me. At one point I became um, overcome with intense emotions, which I didn't, like where did that come from, you know? Um, and dealing with the feelings behind that, not just the feelings of emotions itself, but um, you know, I started crying. And so the feeling of being embarrassed, the feeling of, um, you know, didn't want to make noise. I didn't want to disturb anyone. So everything around that. Um, how my body felt when we did the mindfulness walking. And we've done the um, mindfulness walking before. And this time I even felt, you know, something a little different. And that's the, the whole thing behind this mindfulness um, meditation is that, um, you know, the Buddhist belief of beginner's mind Right, and so every meditation, every experience is is different. It's new, right? And to approach it as such, and and um, and so the mindfulness walking piece for me, just other things that connected, like what other body parts are engaged in the walking, and how does it feel, and at what point does the pressure come off of this muscle and then engage the other one? You know, it was just really, really fascinating. Um, so a lot of you are probably saying, you're nuts, like, way, what, what's so fascinating about walking really slow? <laughs> um, but it was more than just that. Um, the other thing that I, I, I got from it, which I didn't actually realize until, um, yesterday when I was doing some reading, um, and so like the premise of, um, the Buddhist, uh, and I've talked about this in other videos before, like the, the pain is inevitable, but the suffering is optional. And Buddhist talks about how we add to our pain with anxiety and depression of either expectations or, you know, 
worrying about the outcome and that kind of stuff. And when we do that, we actually add to our pain and that's what the suffering comes from, right? So the suffering is optional because we make it so much more than it needs to be. And if we actually focused on the pain and just being with the pain and experiencing it, it's uh, less intense and, and, and in a sense less painful, right? Um, and I bring this up because, uh, so I'm aware of this, and actually, and I think I've spoke to this on, a, on another video that I did, um, and another meditation that I had a really banging headache, and I approached it as, okay, I'm, I'm, I have a headache, but what does that feel like? And I was actually kind of like, all right, if I had to describe this to like an alien, what would this feel like? And as I was doing that, the headache didn't go away, but it didn't feel as intense or as intense as it could have felt if I had just kept on saying, oh God, I wish I didn't have this headache. I wish it would just go away, right? I feel like I'm gonna have it forever. Um, and so that's the, the whole premise that I'm talking about, the suffering that we add to it. Um, and so a lot of us, we add a lot of extra anxiety and depression around, a lot of what we feel anxiety and depression around is is um, that suffering that we cause, the, the added stress that we cause onto the pain. And so, um, for another class, I'm reading on um, opioids, and it talked about how, and I didn't know this, so the op opioids work on the receptors. Um, there's three primary receptors that they, they work on, um, kappa, delta, and mu, I think, other three. Anyways. And what these receptors do, are they work in the part of the brain that perceive pain. So opioids, in a sense, work on the receptors that perceive the pain. And I'm, I'm not sure if you're really grasping this. So I always thought that opioids numb pain. Right? The kill pain. I always envisioned it working on like the nerve endings, right? That feel pain and it and it numbs those nerve endings so we're not feeling the pain. And I and I kind of realized that obviously the pain is still there, and that's that could be like one of the um, bad things about numbing is that a lot of times the pain is trying to tell us something, whether we have a, uh, an infection or or you know something needs medical attention. And um, I know I'm playing with my hair a little bit. I'm not liking what it, <laughs> but I saw, I'm sorry. Um, but it doesn't. It, it works on the receptors that perceives the pain. So we're perceiving the pain differently. And so the connection for me was, okay, so if we change the way we perceive pain, can we do that naturally without the chemical that works on the receptors that change the way we perceive pain? And I think, and I'll have to do more research on this, but I think that the whole premise behind the MBSR program, the Mindfulness-Based Stress Reduction Program, because it originally was for people with chronic pain, was to, in a, in a, non-chemical way, a non-external um, chemical way, work on how we perceive pain, right? And pain could be physical, which a lot of it was, or it could be mental anguish, right? Anxiety and depression, um, other mental um, anguish that, that causes us um, psychological pain, stress, right? Um, and so if we change the way we perceive pain, can that work almost like a painkiller? We, what we call painkillers, right? So in a sense, it's not really killing the pain, but it's changing the way we perceive it in a way that it's less painful. And can we do that through mindfulness? Can we do that through mindfulness-based um, you know, meditation practices? And then, so this in turn changed for me my direction of my schooling. Well, I, I've, all, I've already thought about becoming, um, you know, mastering in mindfulness psychology. 
I've already decided that, that I think that's the the route I want to take because it, it's it, it's interesting for me, and I'm and I'm finding a lot of um, evidence that it's it's working. It's working in my life, and in I think I can help other people also, um, particularly women with recovery from substances. But I don't, I think it could be broader than that. I think it could be you know women in recovery from stress and trauma, right? I think it could be. Uh, you know, maybe eventually not just women, maybe just um, people in general that are suffering. But anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself. So, um, yeah, so this is changing my direction of, I think, what I want to do with my online courses, what I want to um, help people with and how I want to help them and, and discovering, like, um, a, a holistic, a mindfulness approach to recovery in a new way, at least for me. I mean, it's obviously not a new way for a lot of people. The, the mindfulness, you know, psychology has been out there for a while, but it's just opening up so many possibilities for me. So I'm, I'm excited. Um, I want to learn more. I, 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 I realize how much I don't know. <laughs> um, even though I know I, I, I've learned so much and I know a lot, um, there's so much I don't know and I'm excited about learning it um, and I'm excited about sharing my learning journey with you all um, I know I, I, this is a long video and I've been all over the place but um, not really I, I've actually been pretty much on topic more so than I have in other videos but um, I don't know I hope you make sense out of it I hope you have a wonderful day I hope you remember to let the people that you love know that you love them send them that text give them that call give them a great big hug every chance you get uh, live your life enthusiastically. Live your life mindfully. Mindfully. Mindfully, yes. Um, with a sense of awareness in the present moment. Because that's all we have anyway. We don't know what the future brings us. So being mindful in the present moment. Um, yeah. Anyway. Enjoy your day. If you like my videos, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, follow me on um, Facebook and Instagram under Recovery Enthusiast. Um, boy, this this rotary is really um, high traffic today. Um, what else? I'm pausing because I can't. I just, geez, I've never seen it this bad before. I'm going. Um, was a minute um, I'm maybe I'll try to edit this out of the video I don't know if I can I don't have time to edit my videos and that's why I do them like this um, you know I see all those fancy videos on Instagram and Facebook with all like you know music and lights and and, and all these shiny things and and the words come up and you know it, it took them a minute to edit it out and I, I would love to do that I just I my priorities are elsewhere. I'm not going to say I don't have the time because I, if I really wanted to do it, I'd, I'd make the time. But my priorities are elsewhere. Um, my my thing is I want to get the content out to you. I want to, you to get the message, um, and as as I deliver it as quickly as possible. And this is the best way that I can do it. Um, anyway, stay blessed. Until next time, guys. Peace.